I'm here with Joe Irwin from Soil Max. Yep. And as you can see, we've got a tile plow. And as you can see by looking at me, we've been using it. <laughs> and I'm not dirty. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, uh, we've been using it for three days now. And I figured before we get into that footage, we should probably go over what the plow is. So you guys are going to see this before the, the footage. But anyways, Joe, what, uh, what exactly we got going on here? Like what, what makes this different from a different soil or a different tile plow, I guess. Sure. So what we've got, this is our, this is our three point model. Right. And, and we talked about that, uh, you know, when we first started talking that we've got three different plows, uh, and we thought this one would be a great fit for, for you guys. Spoiler alert. It was, yeah, it worked great. Yeah. And great thing about a soil max plow is whether you buy the, either one of our three points or the pull type, they all have the same technology. In them. They all, install tile the same way they all hold grade the same way still and using that same brain no matter what you get you still use the same brain no matter what the big thing that most people kind of if they if they have a misconception it's that we're, we're holding grade with the three point arms and, yeah. and we're not right and as you guys know that you know uh, we're putting those arms in well, that was my first thought was yeah and even on the pull plow i thought that it was going up and down yeah exactly with those wheels yeah and so on either the pull type or the three point, we're putting either the wheels in float or we're putting the three point in float. And so we can completely control grade by changing the angle of the shank in the ground. We do that with those two cylinders there. And like you said, the brain on top from Ag Leader, it's controlling the pitch of this shank. Yeah. And that, that's how, so what we do is if we need to come up a little bit, we, we tip the, the, the front up. If we need to go down, we, we tip it down a little bit. That's all there is to it. I mean, they all hold grade the same way. And, and that's why we like having the dealer network that we have or the relationship that we have when we go to farm shows with, with guys like you is we get to have that conversation. And, and when you and I talked about your tractors and your farm and, and some of the goals of what you need to do, this was a great fit. Yeah. And, and I'm glad to hear three days later that, or, or three days using it, 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 you think so too. Yeah. So last year we had a, uh, a guy come out and do some, um, some tile plowing for us and he was using the Soil Max plow, but it was a pull behind plow. It was on a quad track. In our first conversation, I didn't think we had enough tractor to pull it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think we would be set up right for it. I mean, we didn't have a quad track. Yep. But then I got to thinking, I was like, well, when we had that quad track, I had to pull him the whole time because all he did was sit there and float on top of the yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't remember you said this would pull it, and it, it did yeah. very well. So, was... so one of the first things we talked about, and, and it's really not even the plow, we talked about tires. If you yeah. remember that first yeah. conversation, we talked about tires. And you told me what tires you had, and, and I got excited because I knew this was going to be just fine. Yeah. And uh, uh, the weight of the tractor, the tire combination, all that goes into it. Uh, to be fair... You probably had better conditions today than you had on the quad track yes, in the video. Much better yeah. <laughs> from a year ago. I mean, yeah. these conditions are, are pretty nice today. Not I mean, a typical early March. <laughs> yeah, not typical at all. Uh, and it, and it's done just fine. Uh, you know, I know we had a tow rope on it for one of the mains or a couple of the mains yeah. even. And uh, and that. But we we're also going four feet deep. Yeah, and and that I mean every one of our plows has got a second tow point already hooked to it. Yeah. So you don't have to pull on your tractor. Yeah. And um, the pull type's got it uh, in a little bit different place, but the three points both have a place you can put a clevis. You pull the second tractor right onto the onto the plow. Yeah. That's the safest way to do it. I, I only got here today, but I don't think you ever had to have a helper tractor on it for the laterals. No, none of the laterals were, were pulled. It did rain pretty good today. Yeah. And at one point it was kind of looking like maybe we were spinning, but uh, I mean, the rain held off, we made it through just fine. Yeah, so. yeah, and, and from what I saw today, it, it did great on all the laterals. And, yeah. and we all know, gosh, 90% of the work you're going to do with this is laterals. Yeah. In that yeah. 30 to 36 inch range yeah. in this soil type, and, and that's perfect. But one thing you asked, what, what made us different from a lot of other plows is, you know, it's called the, the Stealth ZD, and the ZD stands for zero deflection. And it's, it's the design that we've got patented where our, our tile exits uh, right underneath the pivot bolt and and our old plow uh, that that wasn't the way it was it, it would exit behind the pivot and, and and the reason that's important i'll get away from that chain reason that's important is um, as you make a grade change um, if you're directly under that pivot bolt the the front can go up or the front can go down and this back end's not going to move up or down with the old design of the plow and then and some of the other plows that are out there today when they exit a couple feet back from this pivot point, as the tip goes up, the bottom goes down. And you can put a, a, a depression in the tile. And that's what we don't want. 
we want that tile to be tucked in there nice and and uh, and so that's that's what makes us different from the from the competitors to be blunt i mean we have that patented that's a that's a patented technology for this plow that Soilmax has. The other thing about our plow, we start at the beginning with the making the shape of the trench. We have a trapezoidal bottom. The, the standards on putting tile in list a couple of three different ways of, of putting the, the tile in the ground as far as, you know, uh, ideal would be a, a half moon, you know, holding grade, that's awfully hard to have a half moon bottom. Right, you know? yeah. So aside from that, you can have a trapezoidal bottom and that's what we that's what we decided years ago to go with. So the beginning of that uh, shear all the way to the back, we make a, a three-sided bottom and just tuck that tile right in there and support it on the bottom and on the sides. I know we dug up one tile and um, might have had a boo-boo and put a tile in the wrong spot. But anyways, when we <laughs> dug it up, I mean, the, the, the tile was yeah. seated in there really well. Yeah, and, and there's plenty of uh, videos on that. And, and, and uh, we've got some photos on our website of actually digging that tile up and, and seeing what it looks like under there. And, and, dirt's all underneath yep, it yep. just keeping it from from collapsing so on the boot sizes of this plow what uh, is the three-point limit that in any way compared to the pull type or are they no the pull type and the three-point uh, so we actually make two three-point plows right so yeah. on this plow it's going to use the same size boots as a pull type okay so it'll go uh, four inch six inch eight inch or ten okay uh, now the other three-point plow we make makes it'll only do three or four inch tile okay but uh, yeah, for this one, the one you guys bought, um, it's going to do four, six, eight, or ten. Uh, the, the only difference between the pull type and the three point, uh, the pull type will go a foot deeper. Okay. So this one was it five or five, five and a half foot deep. Five and yeah. Half. Okay. You know, I think that was one of the things we talked about in our first conversation. Is if you've got a lot of elevation, you've got a lot of roll, you know, you're probably never going to need that extra foot. Yeah. Um, most guys buy a pull type because the tractor that's perfect on their farm. Right. doesn't have a three-point hitch well that's like so we just bought that john deere four-wheel drive and everyone assumed that when we bought that yeah that's what we were going to tile plow with it's like well even if we wanted to we can't yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, and it's and i'm not up. sure i mean i'm uh, perfectly happy with yeah, the choice we because made. i i'm not i'm not kidding you i mean when you told me what this tractor weighed and what tires you had and they were michelins it's like Man, yeah. that is just ideal. Yeah, you know, well, I, that and our John Deere, I mean, our lowest speed that we can possibly run mm. is like 1.2 miles an hour. Oh, that's right, and this is CVT, right? Yeah. Yep, so, yep. Yeah. Perfect, perfect match. Yeah, we're, we're excited to see this. I mean, this is, and the other thing, to be blunt, I mean, this saved you some money. Yeah. Compared to the pull type. The pull type costs more. Right, yeah. Um, and, you know, Return on investments uh, very important for all of us. Right, yeah. And if you can save a little bit of money at the front end and buy a, a plow that just goes a foot less deep, if you don't need that depth, yeah. and you've got a good tractor with a three point, it's ideal. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, when we backed up to the first hole with the three point, I was like, this is, I, I like this quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. It and, is uh, easier. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So one thing I noticed the first day we had it was some of the, uh, well, like the depth chain. Yeah. I'm guessing this is for your uh, level, I guess, or grade yeah. kind of. So so it's really old school. <laughs> it's yeah. as old school as you can get. It's a water level. Uh, it's been on there from the beginning. Uh, we leave them on there. Uh, in our owner's manual, it tells you how to set it up perfect so that if the water's in the green marker, you're running uphill. And, and really the only need for them today with the technology we have is if you back into the woods to, to get a start going, it's it's that last little check that you can say. Some place you can't survey. You can't you can't survey. Yeah. You know. And then uh, even though in the IntelliSoap we can still tell it to go at a certain angle or yeah. a certain degree, yeah. this at least tells you yeah you're going uphill until you can catch your satellites. Yeah. And then your old depth gauge. I mean, we still I, I would glance at that several oh, heck times yeah. just to make yep. sure that. Yep. Because you can move that tag wherever you want. You can set it at three foot. You can set it at you know. And, and what it does, it's just that visual gauge for everybody around that they know yep. everything's cool. Yep. Nothing's changed. Uh, but I don't think you ever had a problem with the technology. No, from this. no, I mean, we, it, uh, everything worked. Pretty and, seamless. I mean, yep. yeah, not not too bad at all. And I think you and BJ both got to drive it, and, yep. and that, that worked out well. And well, if you notice, one of us is a lot more dirty than the other. I think I noticed it was you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looked to me like BJ had found a home inside the cab. For now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's good. I mean, uh, you know, BJ got to run that. Yeah. And, and, and you know, to be fair, I mean, he hasn't run tractors his entire life. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I mean, it was. He was able to jump in there and run this. Yeah. And, it's, it's, and I mean, 
especially us being used to ag leaders operating system yeah. and it, it's it's pretty, oh, pretty yeah. simple yeah. Yep. yeah if you can set an AV line yep. you can run this this farm that we're tiling out right here is is very wet uh-huh. it's, it's a, a lot of clay so far down and I know it's going to help us in a year like 2018 where you know we have record rainfalls so what's that going to do in a year like 2012 where mm-hmm. we have records for the other reason yeah when it's extremely dry yeah. it, so in 2012 on my farm I had a field that it looks a lot like this. This looks like home to me. I mean, the, 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 when we dig the start holes, it just looks very similar to where I'm from in Indiana. And we had a field that was half tile. Uh-huh. And so we have exact, we exactly knew where the tile quit. And in 2012, it was an 18% yield boost over the tile. Okay. And so even in a dry year. Even like in that. a dry year, we got a boost. And when we went back and looked, by Memorial Day, end of May, we, our corn was already starting to show some stress and it just got worse through the summer. But right after planting time, there was just a quick wet spell. And and in, in my mind, that's where the tile paid off, just when that stuff was sprouting. Just that and much that less seedling. stress. Yep, yep, just that much less stress. And it took off. The other thing is, uh, over the tile or in the tiled portion of the field, the root had to look for water even when it was sprouting you know, because that water just wasn't standing up there yeah and the other corn even for that one week maybe wasn't looking for water it didn't have to it didn't have to fight for it and let's just say that root got an inch deeper or two inches deeper than the other roots by the time the drought hit yeah they were still in water yeah and um, that was my actually that was my first year at uh, soil max that was the year that al bought soil max and you know we went and did the the show circuit that summer not knowing the answer to that question as good as we know it now you know i'm sure that was a hard sell that was a hard sell that summer (laughs) it was a hot long summer but then when we got the yield data back and we could show the yield map it's like look it was it was 18 percent better and the other thing i want to be clear the reason i know it was 18 percent better was it was 100 bushel (laughs) over the non-tile ground and 118 over the top so it's not like we're talking making an average year out of a drought no no not at all if you got a drought and you, you don't have, have any water, you got to drought. Yeah. The thing is, 18% better yield, and remember what the corn prices were. Yeah, later so that on. back at that time, you're talking $7 corn yeah. probably. So it's still good money. Yeah. And 18, you know, percentages are still percentages, you know, yeah. and 18% is always going to be better. Now, on a really wet year, there's been times we've seen 30 or 40% right. yield yeah. bump. And, and in fact, one of the fields that, uh, my dad and I tiled the, that we rent. It was a it's a 43.8 acre field, and you, it was it's a weird field. You could almost always plant the whole field, but there would always be a wet spot in the middle, about three or four acres. You almost never harvest in the whole field. You never harvest <laughs> yeah. it. And what we noticed was, you took that that wet spot that was zero. You took it to 200, 220 on you know on, on a good year for that field. But then it's the ra- it's just the little radius rings that go out from that, that that you know started to be ten bushel, forty bushel, you know as the as the corn got bigger. Well, it's all two twenty as well, and so you start looking at those big wet spots that are now gone. It's easy to just yeah. pay for the tile quick, yeah. and 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 we that was landlord ground. So the, the the lady that owned it, she put the tile in. And we we did the labor for free, which is what we do for our landlords. She was thrilled. She couldn't believe how much more money she got that next year, just on putting tile across the whole field. Yeah. And uh, and that was one. You, you and I have talked about this off camera that it was tempting to want to just go tile that one hole. Yeah. But it was so big, we just tiled the whole field. And and in the end, that was the best thing. And now that field just farms perfect. It's a nice, consistent yield. And, uh, well, that's one thing. I mean, well, until now, we've done most of the tiling of my lifetime with a backhoe. Yeah, sure. And doing it with a backhoe, it's not a quick process. And no. usually it's, well, let's get that wet hole, yeah. see if we can drain it over this ditch, and it almost never works. And it's frustrating, <laughs> and it's hard, and it's hard to stay. Time-consuming, and uh, it's and, probably and, not the most accurate method. Yeah. And, and the thing about you know putting in the pattern tile system that, that you guys put in over here and you're going to complete, you know, just levels that whole field out. So you can make management decisions then with you know yeah. looking at SMS and figuring out what you can do. And, I remember my dad telling me years ago, he t- one thing he didn't like after we tiled was the yield map didn't change colors. It was just the same color. And, and he got it. He knew that was the right thing. But he's right. like, man, I used to sit there and like watching that yield change, you know. And, and because my dad's a fixer, he's always going to go try to fix stuff. Yeah. And 
you know, he'd be thinking, well, what can we do? And, you got to adjust the legend now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now you just got to get the legend dialed in yeah. a lot tighter and look at fertilizer and other yeah. stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah, that was one thing he noticed was that all of a sudden all the color is the same. Yeah. And, uh, one thing I found pretty interesting, you guys were saying, that even on some places that are irrigating, they're still seeing benefits from field time. Yeah, so that that's on my farm. We've got a field that we irrigate and it's got a little spring in it and so we've actually got tile under where the pivot goes to, to get that spring out. Uh, then there's a lot of guys doing research where they are using tile a little bit higher up in the soil profile and then they're backing water back up into it during the summer. Oh, uh, okay. So they're doing like a reverse irrigation, you know, sub subsurface irrigation. Gotcha. So a lot of work you can do with stuff like that. Uh, probably on ground like this, your big concerns. Yeah. Getting the water yeah. to the ditch. Well, like this ground, I mean, every time we think we plant it well and we think we're going to have a good stand, it, it always drowns out. So, yeah. 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 And this will help even that out. I, I hope so. Oh, yeah. It will. <laughs> oh, yeah. It will. It will. Is there any kind of hard numbers on, like, return on investment on field tile? Or? Yeah, we've got a calculator on our website you okay. can go to. You know, really, it, it's so specific to the soil, to the, yeah. to the spacing on the tile and, and what you really need to do. But, you know, one way I've always looked at it... And on my farm is if I'm taking water out it was it was taking the place of what oxygen and air should have been in the ground it, it just it always works you know and and so the ROI on some fields was really fast yeah some fields was a little bit slower but it was always there it's, yeah. to be blunt I've never done anything on my farm that had better return on investment than putting tile in I never have uh, this the close second was irrigating Okay. Uh, you know, which is the exact opposite right, on, yeah. on sand ground. But, you know, uh, I've been in <laughs> I've been in the equipment business and now I've, I'm in the manufacturing business. And I remember when I was selling equipment, uh, they would talk about return on investment on combines and planters and, and tractors. And it was it was really small ROI and you had to really kind of yeah. get fuzzy on some of these numbers to convince guys that it did work. And I remember when I got the chance to work at Soil Max, I thought, man, this is something I can talk about because it is real. It's a real yeah. return on investment. There's no snake oil to it. And you were already using Soil oh, yeah. Max plows yeah. long I, before you were working for yeah. it. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. I bought, we bought ours in 97 uh, when Soil Max started. And then, uh, what, 15 years later, never dreamed I'd be working there. But yeah. uh, tiling's one of those things that's a generational thing. You know, we, yeah. you know, we got your dad out well, here. Well, like when we were digging some of these mains, like we're looking at like old clay tiles mm -hmm. that have been there probably for 70 years. Sure, yeah. And then we've hit some old tiles that I know dad has put in with a backhoe, and now we're putting these tiles in with this. And yeah. I hope that my kids aren't hitting these tiles <laughs> later when they're doing them. But, no, they won't. I mean, this yeah. stuff's going to last. I mean, yeah, this, is, but, this is what your grandkids are going to be yeah. enjoying the benefit from. Yeah. And, and it's cool that your dad can be out here and be involved in the process. And then, you know, you got you guys and then your kids. And uh, I know on our farm, you know, it started with me and my dad. Now my son's involved with the farm and he helps tiling and he's got kids. And uh, it's just a yeah, tiling is one of those projects that's very generational. And, and I'm hoping to get that next generation used to this. That's exactly this right. <laughs> because generations like me and you, we need to be in the tractor <laughs> and get, get the younger generation down in, the, in yeah. the hole. That's what we need. No, it's a great product. And, I, and also, I want to thank Brown Farms. I mean, you guys, uh, you've just been awesome to work with. Well, and, I appreciate We appreciate you guys coming out. I mean, it's yeah. uh, the whole crew, all of them. Uh, I mean, everybody's came out. It's been it's been a blast working with you guys. And it's definitely it's it's made this week a lot more productive yeah, than it and, would have been. So. You guys have been great to, yeah. to work with and, and letting us tell our story. And, you know, we're just really proud to be associated with you, to be blunt. Well, really I appreciate are. that. Thank you. Uh, you guys are, uh, my, my wife and I joke, but yeah, you, you guys, the way you farm and I watch it, it's like, yeah, you're about the closest to the Irwin farms <laughs> that there, there is out there, you know. And uh, if you're playing this ahead of time, you know, you're going to get to see the whole crew from Solmax out yeah. there. You know, a lot of the sales and. Uh, our engineering staff, or our engineer, main engineer, was here uh, doing some <laughs> little bit of research as well. So well, that's one thing. I mean, not one person mind getting dirty, and I mean, yeah. you don't always see that in a, in, you know, a exactly company. right. Yeah. And to be clear, I, I brought an extra shirt. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, I did change yeah, shirts. Yeah, he did change. <laughs> We've been rained on a couple times today yeah. too. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's a great, it's a great. Uh, uh, Soil Max is a great place to work. It's a great environment and we've got a good set of people working there. 
you know, the engineer, you're probably going to talk about him in one of your videos, but he started out as an intern working for yeah, us. Yeah. No farm experience. And you said you looked around and he was down the hole digging holes and oh, helping yeah, guys yeah. out. And, and we had our sales staff here. And, and of course, we had Ryan Zook. And they're going to see Ryan Zook all over the place. And <laughs> you can introduce him. But he's he's our field guy. And, and Ryan's super. Great, yeah. great guy to work for our company. So I know he definitely fixed a main that I cut in half. And after that, he was one of my best friends. <laughs> That's exactly so, right. But yeah. again, we just want to highlight, we appreciate everything you guys did for us. So no, I appreciate you yeah. guys coming well, out. And you're I, welcome. Yeah. We're happy to have the plow. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what we can make out of this ground. I know what, yeah. I know what it's been producing and I'm yeah. excited to see what it can be. Yeah, capable I think it's going to be exciting because yeah. it, it'll make a huge difference. Yeah. And er, even ground at, at my home, we had some, some folks tell us we had certain soil types very similar to this and they're like ah oh, tile doesn't work in it and we even believed it back in the 90s and then once we finally got all the ground tiled that we thought tile would help we started tiling some of that and that was some of our best ROI yeah, yeah. the worst ground became brought it back up to what the other stuff was doing yeah uh, you're, you're gonna love it you're, you're just gonna try to find ways to get it done yeah. that, that yeah. you know that, that's what it's about yeah yeah I wish we had it about another well, I kind of wish we had it on our three weeks, but I'm also yeah. kind of excited to get to plant. No, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But uh, you, you got lucky with this week. Yeah, we, this we, was a good week. We timed this week up real well. This was this was excellent. Yeah. If we'd have done this last week, we'd be having a lot more coats on. Today. <laughs> That's exactly right. I heard everybody got sunburned yesterday. We so. did, all of us except for BJ got his joystick handle sunburned. <laughs> That's so. right. So, all right. Well, hey, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thank we you. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys all have a safe drive back. And, oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you we guys, will. you know, want to come vacation in Chillicothe, Ohio anytime, just let me know. I know. <laughs> well, I told you when we came in, we'd actually been here on a vacation <laughs> driving through. You were one like, of the only people. <laughs> my wife's like, we've been there. 